Zachary Snyder wonders, who watches the Watchmen? Around here, we wonder, who watches the Mythwits? The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest, or maybe two, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. We'll do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I am your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this super-packed episode is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Hi, how are you? <laughs> What's up? What's up, Rorschach? Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. On this episode, we are talking with Tori Pond. And Hi. Scott Pond. What's up, my peeps? Otherwise known as Skatori. Boom. Scott E. Pond is a graphic artist and cancer survivor. Tori Duke is Scott's wife. Is this Tori Duke Pond? Is it, I thought, see, I got you as Tori Pond. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Scott's wife, the ringleader of Skatori. When the duo joins us here on the Mythwits, we combine like four mighty lions to form the mighty... Myth Skotori Witch. <laughs> so. Reppin'. Reppin', yeah. Oh, Mike's right. reppin'. Yes, he is. On this episode, we are going to be talking about The Watchmen. When we get together with these cats, we like to talk about movies. One of the things we like to do is talk about movies. Uh, and we last time that we did this, we went back 20 years. This time, we're only going back 10. So it's 2019. Uh, so we're going to talk about a movie from 2009, The Watchmen, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen this thing a bunch of times, and I am ready to talk about it. What about you guys? Wait a minute. We're going to talk about The Watchmen? The Watchmen. I thought we were, thought we were, thought gonna... we were doing The Swatchmen. The sw oh, see, that would have been the 80s. <laughs> oh. I thought we were supposed to talk about The Matrix, oh. Tori's favorite movie. I'm, I'm, I'm no. so confused now. No, I, I think it's hilarious that every movie that you've had us on, I've not seen them until the day of. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Pretty much everyone. <laughs> good, good preparation on that. Hey, it, I, it's live and uncut. Yeah. It's fresh, it's fresh in your head. Very fresh. That's well, right. that's that's kind of cool because we get a uh, we get a fresh take from somebody who's you know who's not tainted by by time or nostalgia or or whatever and you get to see it with 10 year old movie conceptual eyes you know so like you know when movies are made in a certain time period a lot of times they'll have the feel of that time period although 10 years usually is not huge on that i don't think 20 years a little bit yeah 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 it wasn't bad so uh all right so and and just for clarification, um, and I just told Howard in the uh, chat room, but um, we are de we are discussing the movie. It mm -hmm. is interesting that uh, episode one of The Watchmen on HBO just dropped as well. Right. This will rekindle some people's um, interest in watching it. I think it has kindled kindled mine. Right. Um, so that's a thing. But uh, all right. So and and I I may touch on the graphic novel. I don't know. I've read it. Scott, have you read the graphic novel? Uh, you know, even though I've been a comic geek since the early 90s, I actually have not read it, okay. mainly because of all the hype ah. that's been around it for years right. and years. Right, right. I may be the only I, one I here. Read it either. Yeah, I may be the only one here who's read it, but that's okay. We're not focused on that. We're focused on the movie. That's our goal. I mean, I, I can mention things where it's different from the graphic novel, only because the graphic novels sort of set the precedence, and the movie was very closely based off of it. I mean, yeah. Zack Snyder was very close to the, the graphic novel. There are a few key changes, but for the most part, he's pretty close. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we actually do you... have it on the shelf in our living room. We just haven't read it yet. Okay. It's good. No. It's good. So, do you want me to give a real quick uh, rundown of some of the the uh, statistics of the movie? Real yeah, quick? sure. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. So, uh, as we said, this is based on a gra the graphic novel by Alan Moore, um, and this graphic novel was illustrated by Dave Gibbons. It was written 32 years ago in 1986. Uh, there were three to four failed attempts at making the movie uh, before the rights were finally passed along to. Uh, DC, well, no, DC owned, did DC buy or who? Yeah, the DC then, comic. Uh, yeah, yep. uh, and uh, so Zach and the Zach Schneider was given the uh, uh, the go ahead to do it. Um, who was I can't remember some of the other people to give it an effort, but one guy was like, "There's no way. There's, it's just too much information. 
you know, tightly dense and packed in this um, Ill- graphic novel. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, he did his, Zack Schneider did his best. Uh, he, this movie came out in 2009. Uh, it is two hours and 21 minutes long. It currently has a six point, or a 7.6 out of 10 on the IMDb and a 64% tomato rating and a 71% audience rating. It did get very mixed reviews when it debuted. Uh, it was very divisive. People either loved it or hated it. Right. Pete, you loved it uh, upon its arrival. Oh, I did. God damn, I love that movie. Okay. So, and, and a slight, and a slight correction. The theatrical release was about two and a half hours. Yes. The director's cut, which we just watched today again, was 186 minutes of glory. Yes. It felt like it was going on forever, even though I enjoyed it. It was like, oh my god, I can't sit here any longer. <laughs> yeah, that's actually I rewatched it again for this show, and I watched it in two parts. I watched an hour and a half of it last night, and then an, the other hour and a half of it today. It was like watching two movies. Yeah, it really because I have, I have the the pretty nice box set that's oh. beautiful. Check you out. Yeah. So yeah, the word I just bought it on um, Google, and I guess I just got its regular release. But there was no other choices. I wish I could have gotten the director's cut or whatever. You know, it's it's kind of hard to. It's kind of hard for me to say what was in the director's cut. Like I don't, I don't really know. Like I was watching it, and it was so kind of like seamless. And the director's cut doesn't really change the movie much. It just adds more. You know, it's just it's just yeah, more. more yeah, it's just a little more in depth. But it doesn't like it's not like those ones where the director cut out pieces of it and like to put those back in will completely change things and give you different perspectives on the movie. It just gives you. It just goes deeper. Mm. Okay. okay. I think it's a little more graphic. I think. Some of the stuff that I saw in there, like uh, when Rorschach chops that dude in the head with the cleaver, right? I think in the regular cut, it's just one chop. But in the in this version, he's like just chopping away at the guy's head. And you no, see I parts of his it. face falling off. Oh. Right? Okay. <laughs> or was it the sex scene in the owl mobile? That might have been longer, maybe. Because I was like, uh, is this really phrasing. Phrasing? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the extended cut. Mm. Right, right, right. And I don't think Doctor Manhattan was extendedly cut, was he? I, I seen. I was like, uh, I forgot to like. Seemed, I forgot to he, check. He was no, extended. We don't no, know. He, he seemed. He seemed like he was walking through a freezer most of the movie. Yeah. yeah. I even made the comment. I looked at Scott after there were a couple times when, like at the beginning, when he had the little loin cloth, per se, and. I was like, okay, that's really awkward. And <laughs> then there's the part when they took it off when he was on Mars by himself. And I was like, you're like, is this not proportionate hey, at all? What's going on with this guy? I'm right. like, Dude, what's it's going cold on, on Mars, Tori. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Christ. You know the temperature's like on Mars. You're lucky you can see the thing at all. You know, like, you it, was not, it was not proportionate at all. <laughs> um, so, so what's interesting... Um, What's interesting Yo, about that is, is that, you know, he remade himself. So that's, I mean, he had sort of the same face as, as Dr. Osterman, but he, uh, Dr. Osterman's body didn't look like that at all. That was like sort of his ideal, like ideal yeah. self. And so you would, he must have not thought highly or like been concerned about that area, but, but why would he be? He's an, he's like this super being, right? Yeah. He can yeah. make it any size he wants, any time he wants. Hashtag CGI. Right. <laughs> well, well, the re- the real question is, if that's the ideal version of himself, how bad was it before? Oh my God! <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> hey, you know what? He he was pleasing his girl. It's the motion of the ocean, right? I mean, come on. Uh, yeah. Well, what well, of him was, the batteries. was the big blue guy, right? I mean, she was she was going crazy. But then again, you know. Like she said, it was like licking a battery. So you know he's got a little extra. He's like, bigger. Well, it's a juice. So a little to speak. extra juice. <laughs> mm. All right. Before we move on, do you guys know oh, wow. anything else that Zachary Schneider has uh, directed? Yeah, he did. Uh, didn't he do some of the Justice League stuff? He did Justice League, yeah. uh, Batman, and v-, v Superman. Oh, the man. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's not uh, not it's worse, so, not good so far. I think he put uh, all his juice into Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch was okay. I mean, a little okay. 
little mm-hmm. light on story, but yeah. His his blue uh his blue schlong is on that as well as three hundred three hundred three hundred was good, yeah. I liked three hundred. I've watched it like twice this past month. Ah. Early days, Dawn of the Dead. Oh oh, that okay. was good. That the Dawn yeah. of the Dead remake was fantastic. And he was a writer, one of the writers, which I think is important. We'll get into this later. So it's important that he has, uh, as a writer and director, I think if he has a co-writer, co-director, or, well, he doesn't write this stuff, but uh, if he has balance, think, you know, it, it may have been better. But uh, for that reason, Wonder Woman, he was a co-writer on Wonder Woman. Oh, okay. Wonder Woman was really good. Yeah. Yep, which yep. I like the first half of that. The first half of Wonder <laughs> Woman was much better than the second half. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Actually, you know what, Scott? I would say for Wonder Woman, I like when she beats the guy you think is the bad guy, right? I like the movie right up till then. As yeah. soon as the main bad guy appears, I was just like, oh, you know, I was yeah. like, damn, this movie is so good up until that point. And we can get in a whole discussion about yeah, why yeah. I hate DC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mike's keeping us on the rail. And we're back. So I will not list every single uh, actor, but uh, I do have a list. uh, So we can refer to that at any moment. I have that at the ready. Uh, Pete, uh, I will yield the floor to you, but my suggestion is we could go around Robin and and sort of ask first and foremost what we individually uh, and personally would describe this movie as, how we describe it. Okay. Let's start. Let's start with the newbie. The first yeah. time watch it. Let's start with uh, Tori. No, actually, you know what? I, I, it looks like I just hit her in the head with a bat. Let's go with Scott first. <laughs> Give Tori a second to think. Mm-hmm. Scott? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, if, if I were to summarize this to someone who's never seen this but has seen other superhero movies, I would say it is the, the gritty, realistic undercurrent of the reality of what superhero movies are actually about. In that it's not the glitz, it's not the glamour, it's not really saving the day and saving everybody. It's about that gray area in between. Okay. Mm. Okay. Tori, what do you think? All right, I can agree with that. Um, I did like it that it was different from your traditional superheroes. It was the gritty feel. Um, I knew. I will say that Rorschach is now my favorite. Ever is is your favorite or isn't? Is is okay. Yeah, yeah, I like him a lot. Okay. Uh, now, y- y- watch it again. You may discover that you don't like the fact that you like him so much. That's what I found on my rewatch, I'm like, oh, I really don't like the fact that he's my favorite now. I'm kind Ooh. of embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. It says a lot about me. It's fine. <laughs> no, I'll watch it again and see. But. No, well, no, no, we'll, and we'll get into his character why, and, and I think I know why you guys like him so much, and and I do like him. He's not my favorite, but I do like him. But I think I know why you like him, and it's not a bad reason why to like him. I mean, yeah, look, come on, every person in the world has things you can like and dislike about them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, like, we all come as we're all a very complex package, right? So, Mike, what do you, what are your thoughts on the movie? Like, what do you? Um, how would you describe it? I, to me, I say The Watchmen is uh, a metafiction superhero movie. It's it's not a superhero movie. It's a movie about superheroes. Um, and let me give you my working definition of what metafiction is, because sometimes people throw that around willy-nilly. Metafiction uh, is fiction in which the author self-consciously um, alludes to the artificial or literalness of a work uh, by parodying or departing from the novelistic conventions, especially naturalism and traditional narrative techniques. Boom. Sure. So, sure. sure. I buy um, that. Um, no. Yeah. And, and it, it does that in a bunch of different ways. It, it does it in a very cerebral way where we're, we've been, without even knowing it, when this movie came out, it didn't even know that it was setting the tone for what superhero movies would not become. Right. Because superhero movies are... I candy and yeah and and thought you know porn this is not thought porn this is work to watch this movie yeah. which fine I like a movie that I have to work to watch right what work yeah um but uh you know the it's it's not a in it all you know in some of the non conventionals alisms is <laughs> the villain, quote unquote villain um executes his plan 
flawlessly. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. wins. Yeah, he wins. <laughs> but but what was interesting is, and we'll get into this even more, the villain it's also the good guy in some ways. It's 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 a movie of perspectives. Like there's so many perspectives. So like I'll, I'll give you I'll go with mine. If if you're done, Mike, may I uh, may I continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I don't. You know, uh, it, it is a superhero movie in a way. Okay, because it's, it's several things, but I really see it as kind of like a classic science fiction movie. In that, what science fiction likes to do is it likes to take uh, some fast fantastical element. Um, and and put it on mankind and then see how mankind responds to it so that we can see ourselves from another perspective. It's kind of like when the Twilight Zone would, would create this situation that is is impossible and then you would see people react and then it, it helps you see how people really are because you get to see them react in a way that is when they're put in an alien or foreign situation, which is how I felt this was. This really was sort of like... Um, you know, the response to to people having superpowers and what that would do, you know, kind of like are people taking the, the vigilante standpoint. So what happens when you have a Superman in the world, realistically? You know, it's not people just go, oh, look, there goes Superman. You know, it's just like, it's like, hey, I hope Superman comes and saves us. You know, people aren't, the movie doesn't treat the superheroes like that. It treats them like, oh, shit, this this dude's like a god. Like, is he a god? And people question his existence. People are terrified of him. Um, um, pe people constantly, the the Viet, the, the Vietnamese worshipped him like a god. Matter of fact, when they surrendered, they wanted to surrender directly to him. You know, it, and it changed history. They they did things that made sense. Like, you know, we get in the Vietnam War, we got a Superman. So we win the war. Period. Right. We won the war yeah. in like a week. Done. You know, it's like, so that's what I like about it. They He didn't pull any punches. Um, and the superheroes were as flawed as we are. Like, they have... Um, they have they have issues like we do, and it was kind of cool also to see that that there were some superheroes who didn't go down that rabbit hole as bad. Like they they dealt with it in a more what we would like to think of as a more positive, more like more superheroistic way. Sort of like so like the Al right, the Al too. Um, he's like a good guy. Like that was sort of in my my opinion that was sort of his superhero or his his archetype was as he was he's basically the good guy of, of all of them. He's the best of all of them. Yeah, but even so, even so, he, like all of them, fell into the gray area. He wasn't pure white, and, and even, the, no. even the worst bad guy wasn't pure black. Right. You know, it, none of them fell at the extremes. They were all variations mm -hmm. in between, which is, which is really the true commentary. It's, it's the commentary of what life is all about, in that your worst enemies and your best friends are not the best and worst people in the world. They're just people doing what they feel is right, and using whatever means that they believe is within their right to use in order to get what they want. Yep. Oh, uh, that reminds me, Scott. Like in a flashback, um, when uh, the the elf guy can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he said uh, that uh, the the comedian had come to visit him, and uh, the comedian was. Um, basically saying you know i can't believe in in this world you know like you're the closest thing i have to a friend out of everyone yeah, yeah. so it, it it shows to that theme of like uh overlapping archetypes from opposite ends of the spectrum sort of all so sort of in one mobius strip overlap <laughs> right yeah. what and i liked about it is what is like you were kind of playing off of what you were saying pete is you had to work for it because at the end i was like Wait, wait, what just happened? Right. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. Let me let me play this in my head again. I, I even look at Scott like, hold on. Wait, <laughs> they lost? Like, <laughs> like, what did he just do? Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it was kind of cool to have something to think about other than, okay, Batman's going to save the day and right. kick the villain's butt. You had to actually figure out, like, who's actually going to save anybody right? or destroy everybody. And the and the beauty is is that like when you get to the end of it, you have to think about it because it's like, okay, so the world is on the cusp of World War Three, right? Missiles are about to they're like literally about to fly out of the silos, and that's the end of mankind. Period, right? Mm -hmm. So Ozymandias he foresaw this like he didn't just. Um, you know this this wasn't the timing was perfect like he saw this coming he. 
he's the smartest man in the world and he really is the smartest man in the world like they don't just say that like they do in marvel comics where it's like it's like oh reed richards the smartest man in the world and then he goes and does something really stupid or he doesn't foresee something that we all saw or read in the comic right and right. no but he does he foresees all this stuff he sets all the stuff in motion and he basically saves the world right now he has to kill a few million people to do it and some people would say like well a real good guy would figure out how to do it without you know having to kill people but you know i think his commentary on mankind and 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 dr manhattan backs him up on this you know it's just kind of like you know that's who we are as a people that's how we have to be treated we're so petty and ridiculous as human as a as a race of beings as a as a group of things that we literally have to face destruction from an outside force to save us from ourselves right. Ooh, i have I an mean, interesting kind of a uh, true story yeah sorry it's true i mean you, you look at like 9 11 even like it took all of that for our country to come together but it's so easy to be divided 90 percent of the time but unite when something terrible happens yep mm. That's true. So uh, now would be a good time since you were speaking directly about Ozzy Mandius uh, to point out sort of his archetype, uh, which is um, a consequentialist, uh, where his view of morality uh, and where he bases his actions solely on their final results, choosing to ignore the short term harm <laughs> in service mm -hmm. of long term benefit. Mm -hmm. So uh that that yeah that i mean and that is one type of person uh right. which is anathema to say someone like uh the owl guy i can't yeah. never remember yeah. his name <laughs> dan dan thank you who is the more the idealist <laughs> yeah he is the idealist and you know it's funny because it's like who's to say who's right and who's wrong right because mm -hmm. the idealist will save 10 people and let 100 people die does that make right. him the better person maybe I mean, because he's not willing to sacrifice, he's not willing to trade lives, right? But I mean, at the same time, it's like, yeah, but if if if, if you have to let a few people die to save everybody else, right? I mean, right. how does that make you worse? I, I don't know. Well, it's it's they're very good philosophical questions. Well, and and what's what's good about it is, this is also reflected in the way they handle the Marvel. Marvel movies across the entire arc, right? Is that the movies really focused on those that they saved, but then the follow-on movies focused on, well, those that they didn't save and the consequences of those actions and then getting the accords put into place in the Marvel movies. So we're seeing, we're seeing kind of that approach to, to it's, the, it's the bigger, picture. it's not just your point of view at the time. You have to be considering every single angle for your action and decide then what's actually the best approach. Right. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, so, you know, you're talking about Mark, Mike, you're talking about uh, archetypes, right? Um, so let, let's go through the archetypes real quick, just on everybody, just, just real quick. Like, so we got Rorschach, who is the, you know, he's, he's the, the, the black and white. So he's, he doesn't see gray. He's, he's a, he's the type of person that there was either right or there was wrong. Uh, you got the comedian and Mike, we're, Mike and I were talking about this beforehand and, um, you know, Dr. Manhattan, he is sort of like an ultra nihilist, right? Because he can't even, he, he like, he can't even change things like he, cause he sees the future and the past and all the timelines, his own timelines, um, everything that's in his own timeline. Um, so he, he's not even willing to, or doesn't seem capable of changing it. Um, but at the same time, the comedian is a nihilist as well, because, he sees life as the big joke that it is. Like, there's no point to life, so who cares? He's, I mean, he's kind of like, you know, if I kill these people, so what? They were going to die anyway eventually, you know, and life doesn't matter. It's not really important, and it's all a big joke, and it, you know. Um, but Dr. Manhattan, I mean, he fits in that category, but he's also sort of alien to humankind, right? He has, he has become <laughs> some other thing. So it's kind of hard to put him in a category of, of, of along with the rest of us and the rest of them. I some of the uh, reading I did uh, and and 
examples I saw also of Dr. Manhattan being a nihilist were, were his interactions with other humans, which you don't see as much in the movie um, as, as you evidently see in the comics where you see like his relationships with women. It's like it, it, he wants to have a relationship, but he also knows exactly when they're going to break up. Yes. And he just loses the will to even give a shit after a while. <laughs> Well, not only that, but, but what's interesting is there's something that, that's core human. He's, there's a human still within his core. So, like, he is still attracted to young women, right? Yeah. And, well, man. And as, he, as they age, he doesn't. So, yeah. um, you know, so that's why he keeps, you know, he, he, the, the one, Janie gets older and he, and he leaves her for the younger, leaves her for a younger woman, right? Um, and I, and it's, it's not because he's a, jerk or anything it's just um well maybe he's a little bit of a jerk but <laughs> but he's not a conventional he's jerk. Young enough to keep up with him yeah i guess i don't know but it, it's just interesting because he's he's such he's such a I don't know, he's such an interesting character i love dr no, Man I, I manhattan's be... my favorite character by the way i don't know if you can I feel like really? yeah. dr manhattan is actually not a character oh yeah okay dr manhattan is a self-aware story cat that's all he is in, in that he's trapped in his own predetermined step by step of what he has to do and he's just a play actor going along with it. But other than that, he has no free will in reality because he's already locked himself on what he has to do and how he has to do it. Hmm. So all he is is to keep the story moving and all he has is a humanity shell around and that's it. That's interesting. That is an interesting that's an interesting take. I I could see that you just disappointed Pete Scott, I'm sorry to tell you. What? I no, don't. no. I mean, <laughs> I, you believe in the God. when I say, when I say like, he's my favorite character, he is, um, well, I mean, he is a character in that he is, he's a, a being that's in the story and he does make a decision on his own, but, but you're right. I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying. He, he, in, in some ways he's also not a character in some ways. He's also sort of like zombies aren't, they're not really a, a, a character in stories. They're sort of like nature. They're sort of like a fire or sort of like a flood. You know, they don't, they don't have an action in, in the, in the whole story. Um, so, so I could see that. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I, and I also, I like the comedian too, but that's cause I'm kind of a nihilist myself, but man, I see a little bit of him in me. I want to chime in on, on Manhattan as well though, yeah. because he, um, he also never, one one of my the reasons I'm saying that uh, with his uh, uh, determinism um, issues is he knows his own outcome of everything that's going to happen to him, and he never makes a choice to do anything different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's he true. knows that the comedian is going to shoot that woman. He never does anything. He, you know, comedian points that out. But in other times, you know, uh, it's been pointed out to him, and I think there was something in the graphic novel where he was called out on it, and he said, "We're all puppets." Okay, we no one has a choice, but I'm a puppet who sees his strings. In yeah. other words, he he only knows when his strings are going to be pulled. That's the only difference. But the only time he makes a choice is that that the that goes against whatever deterministic outcome he foresees is to go back to Earth. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know <laughs> for what that. I thought I'd point that out. Which yeah, is okay, okay, but here's another thing. So. We we're pointed out that Doctor Manhattan can't choose to do to do things differently, but I think something that he said, and it's something that that he hints to, he's no different than any of the other characters in that they can't change what they're going to do either. Like so, he can see what they're going to do. They can't change it because they can't see the timeline. Well, he can see the timeline. He's just like them, though. He can't change it either because all times are happening at once. So he can't change something. That he can't change the stream that he's in. You know what I mean? It already happened. That's the weird aspect. Right. But, but 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 the the way that but for it, for that to be true, it also has to have happened for everyone around him too, because he's not in a separate timeline. So according to the timeline of the Watchmen, or according to the the physics of the Watchmen, all times are happening, have happened, and will happen simultaneously, which is one of the, the theories of physics, that that's, a, that that's actually a thing. The only difference between him and any other character in the show, and I'm not saying this as a fact, because I'm not getting this from anywhere. I'm just saying this as an observation or a thought process of my own, a thought experiment of my own, is, is I think they're all in that, and I think that's part of what he was saying. He was saying, we're all puppets. 
I can just see the strings. So while I choose not to change my timelines, because I can't, just like you can't. I don't mm. know. That's my thought. So is yeah, that why I, you like him? No, I just like him because he's. It's just such an interesting. It's such an interesting concept that character and i love the lines i love his lines like one of the i like the miracles by their definition are meaningless only what can happen does happen like i love that and right. um and, and this other one world I mean, the best quotes in the movie yeah the world's oh, smartest man poses no with, more with threat Lake. to me than the world's smartest termite <laughs> like that's yeah, awesome right. yep yeah i have a whole i, I thought we were gonna see you like to share Go ahead. What? Tori? Hello? Oh, sorry. It was it got all like distorted, so I didn't know what was going on. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I thought Pete was going to say that he liked the lines of... What's his The blue guy? I thought you were going to say you liked the lines of his abs. Oh, well, I do like the lines of his abs. I would like to have those lines <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, don't, wouldn't we all? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what... <laughs> Another and, it, and it doesn't hurt to have a pantsless superhero either. Yes, but I, you know what though? I love that. I actually I love that they had him naked, and it's not because I want to see a naked man. It's because it fits his character so perfectly. Why would this person, this well, this thing, right? Why would it have clothes? It wouldn't see no. a need yeah. in clothes. Like it's I it only wears them for us ever. Like when it goes yeah. on that talk show, it wears them because it has to to go on a talk show. You know what I mean? Yep, exactly. Right. I thought that was really clever. Yeah. It puts yeah. this on or <laughs> <laughs> So uh let's see. Manhattan, uh yeah. I think we we covered him. The comedian, yeah, nihilist, also realist. Uh, he just basically is like, the world is schlock. Nothing's going to change. Who cares? Yeah, but uh, he didn't add anything to the world really either. I mean, you look yeah. at his acts and stuff, yeah, and you're like, oh, he's still disgusting. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. Yeah. He's he is he is a reprehensible person. Well, he was he was a, he was actually a villain taking the job of a hero. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Really his costume was, was being a hero. Yeah. yeah, it's like it make him feel better. Yeah, I, about his despicable ways. I just, I just like him. I, I like the character. I don't think it's a it. I don't idolize him or view him as a as a as a good person. I just think he's a great character. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think he's a. It's a very interesting character. Yeah, I think Jeffrey Dean Morgan really pulled him off well too. Oh my god. Yes. Lee yes. <laughs> Howard says, "What if God was one of us, just a nude, nude dude on a bus?" Oh God! <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Good job, Howard. Hey, David Benavidi said Pete just liked his BBC. I guess that's Big Blue <clears throat> something, uh, but uh, it wasn't Big are, David. Are. David, we did it. Mm -mm. It was uh, LBC. The LBC. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyway, uh, let's see. Have to show uh, were there any other characters of note? Yeah, well, okay. Ozymandias, of course. I mean, he's just ridiculously complex. Um, yeah. But we've, we've said some stuff about him already. But let's not talk, let's not miss, miss Jupiter, right? Um, uh, she was – how do you guys characterize her? I, I, I'm polarized on her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in, that, in that I felt that the Silk Spectre 2 – Unfortunately, was the weakest character in the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Spectre 1, though, was extremely powerful because yes. that had the underlying current for right. the whole movie. Yeah. Um, but, but number two, it, it was, uh, again, there for, care, for um, story hooks. How, how to motivate mm -hmm. the owl, how yeah. to motivate John. And, and really, unfortunately, if you look at what she accomplished, she herself didn't accomplish much. Wait. A little bit. Hold on. But I got to give her a tiny bit. They did give her a little bit. They gave her a couple little carrots. Okay. For one, she's the character that she's a character that actually grew. So that's good storytelling because she did grow. Yeah. So that's good because no one else in the movie grew. Everybody wow. else was who they were. So she had growth, character growth, which is good. That's mm -hmm. cool. Um, she did convince John to come back to Earth. So that was kind of cool, right? And that was of her own convincing him. She, it right. wasn't. She wasn't just. A, a plot hook in that one in all the other places yes 
you're right to motivate yeah. John to motivate uh, Dan. But in that one instance, she actually had like a good. There was a good bit right there. Um, about Lori. Okay. Yeah. So Lori, I, I. But I'm. But you're right. Most of the movie, she spent being a wet blanket. Right. Like yeah. not much of a character. She does yeah. have her moments, but they could have done more with her. I think she was underused. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she did have some pretty good like sequences, but. Oh yeah. There wasn't anything that was like, you know. Yep. But she was uh, kind of the heart of the movie too. Like she, between her and the owl, the two of them were kind of the heart of the movie. They, if anyone gave a shit about everybody, it was those two, you know. Well, and she was, and she was probably the most human. Yes. Of the superheroes too, because because even even owl was was the the rich kid who inherited the inheritance from his banker dad, and has all the t- the trinkets and toys. That's not everybody. Whereas having a mom that's an alcoholic and they basically had toxic relationships that she saw growing up, mm-hmm. that's more human than almost every single other character in the story. Other than mm-hmm. other than Warshack. Oh, she she also exhibited classic traits and this is I mean, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but she exhibited classic traits and I will tell you I recognize some of them because I may be similar in some ways. Of having an absentee father. And an alcoholic yep. mother, she showed some of the classic traits that people grow up with who, who yeah, grow up a, under those situations. So Rorschach, but, you know, whatever. Oh, Rorschach was just a nut job. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you know, you try to be like somebody. I mean, Rorschach was just hateful. I mean, he's just. I don't know, though. All these he, damn sinners. All right. No, I think you guys like him, and, and there's nothing wrong with this. I think you all like him because. He's the out of all the characters, out of all of them, he's the only one that never questions himself. He knows what he's doing all the time. Every decision he makes is with strict determination. Yeah. yeah. It's it's uh he's an antisocial, violent psycho, uh psychopath with an absolute worldview. However, he reminds me of uh, what is his name? Uh, what's that other show where there was the he's the murderer? Uh, God, he he, uh, he used to he was a he was a murderer. He worked with this lady at the FBI, but then he'd go around and actually kill the people. But, oh my God! Uh, oh, what the come heck on. have you been watching? Um, a TV so, show or a real uh, person? Dexter? A TV show. It's a Dexter. TV show. Dexter. Dexter. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Not the Punisher, um, but yeah, Dexter. He reminds me of Dexter because it was like you know he he'll stay with it. You know he has a code, and he will do the right thing even if society says it shouldn't be done. Well, okay, yes, <laughs> sort of. I mean, vigilantism is not good for reasons, and you know because sometimes people get killed for, you know. Not actually doing something. He never killed anyone. Wrong. Yeah, but if it gets the job done, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. fair enough. No, I'm not fighting with you. I like, dude. My favorite hero in the Marvel universe is the Punisher. I love the <clears throat> Punisher, and I love him for the yeah. same reasons. Like he is one of those dudes who's uncorruptible. Just he knows what he's gonna do, right? And every decision he makes is like, you know, not questions. Like he he doesn't like later on he doesn't go. Hmm, I wonder if I should have done that. You know what I mean? He's 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 a. a, a a, a person who knows themselves. Yep. That's always good to know thyself. Yeah. And yeah. It's interesting. And what I respected most about him is he knew that uh, Manhattan had to kill him. He knew he was dead. He's like, dude, you, you know you got to kill me. Oh, Just yeah. Get mm-hmm. because he knows Just I'm going him. straight out to, to, to out this, which, well, he, I guess maybe he did or didn't realize. He probably knew as he was dying that <laughs> that book's could get out anyway well no he did well i mean knew the book was out like he dropped it in the thing but i think i think he wanted to die i think he had he basically had a death wish anyway he he just and he couldn't i think here's the thing imagine you're rorschach right you're uncompromising and you know what isaac mondeus has done you know he has killed millions of people to save billions of people he's just saved the world and you can't tell anyone because you'll undo everything he did. All the sacrifices that were made will be made in vain because once people realize what has happened, you know, the missiles will start flying again. Like they'll be like, oh, well, it wasn't from the outside. Then we'll let's fight each other again. Right. Yeah. And he knows he can't keep it quiet, but he knows if he talks, 
right? He's going to ruin it for everybody. So he's just like, you know, and, he, and he's, he's miserable. And he knows he'd have to live with that misery. So he's just like, do it. And real quick aside, um, Howard also said, and I'm going to take his word for it, that he said if you liked um, Ozymandias, that uh, you'll love him in the TV show. So that's definitely a thing that's going to happen for me too. Um, I'm definitely going to watch that. Uh, what um, what can we talk about anything we didn't like about the, the movie? Talk about some, some negatives. But we, we can talk about negatives and or positives. I have a list of both, um, but uh, I tell you what. I'll let me go first, um, and I'll. You overachiever. I'll... <laughs> Love, Mike loves making comparisons. That's his favorite thing to do. I do. I do. You um, list maker. <laughs> um, where is it? Where is it? It is right here. So the positives is that I really liked uh, Schneider's use of cinematography. Uh, you know, he's very classic with his slow mo and speed ups and and use of symbolisms and use of the music. If you really pay attention to the words, uh, you know, of the um, you know, oh, the, you know, the times they are changing, um, you know, intro. Um, you really see that he, the visuals nail the words. I mean, to a point when I was watching this for the second time, um, just I, I put it on for a second time today, just watched a little bit of it. Uh, and I was like, whoa, I just didn't even realize that when I watched it for the first time. So, or mm -hmm. second time. It was my third time. Anyway, uh, so I like that. Uh, the music was really good. Some of the music I didn't like so much, but um, uh, I like how it's its own cult movie. Uh, it really feels like it's going to hit that status if, if it, we can't say that it has yet. I'm not sure, um, but uh, I, I think it's on its way. Um, my negatives, um, the storytelling at times was a little confusing um, because – uh, everything seems so heavy-handed. Like, everything in every scene had its moody, self-serious, lofty weight to it. It was just like, you know, that's that's supposed to be a literary and, and, and uh, a device, you know, used um, to wrap Ed either in the beginning or the end of something with some things wrapped, or, you know, in between. It was just sort of like heaviness after heaviness. Although the dialogue sometimes seemed more like monologues, you know, people were just speaking more and telling instead of, you know, some showing. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I'm 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 being a little critical, uh, and uh, I think uh, although I will say and and and. For everything about Ozzy Mandius that we liked, I will say that uh, Matthew Good, uh, he just telescopes the villainy. And I'm sure he was directed to do this, I'm sure. But this, the villainy, the, the way that he did it was just so campy. It was just the whole movie just, just it, it, it could have been done so much better if there was a, a, you know, a few tells, you know, not like make it so obvious. That's just me. Like what's so obvious? Wait, I'm sorry, what do you, what do you mean? That he was the villain, or that he was, you know, the bad guy. Okay. But it really wasn't all that obvious, though. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I didn't figure it out till. I mean, but don't judge me because of that. But, um, <laughs> but I didn't figure it out until closer to the time that they kind of announced it, though. I didn't think it was overly clear. I didn't think it was overly clear. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 when I first saw it in the theater, I'm like. <clears throat> yeah, he's a candidate for the big bad guy. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but it wasn't it wasn't uh, telegraphed in any way up front. Uh, I didn't I think don't know. so. I was kind of expecting like a huge twist and the war would actually happen and everybody would die. But <laughs> so I was kind of pleasantly surprised they didn't, but Yeah, I don't I don't remember I don't remember being telegraphed, but like 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 what Scott said, I do remember like he was he was a suspicious character. So he wasn't like, but I think that's fine. I think it's fine to have him as you know. In 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 the movies, all you know, in the greater again sort of meta fiction of the movie, I guess it fits. So I I, I guess I have to retract it as being a negative and just saying that hey, look, that's one of the the key elements that made it that way. Yeah, I mean, you're entitled yeah. to your opinion. It's okay, Mike. Yeah, it's all right, Mike. You're fine. <laughs> I would I would say the only yeah. negative I really have about the movie, um, other than uh, you know, uh, 
the Silk Spectre too. Like, like Scott said, they I think she was underutilized. Um, she had some redeeming bits, but you know, could have been done a little better. But that's fine. Um, it wasn't horrible. I so the difference between this is where we're going to get into the difference between the book and the movie. So the ending, right? <clears throat> In the ending uh -huh. of the book, it's not the same. It's not Doctor Manhattan that that mm. does the the deed. They don't they don't uh, they don't make it him that does it. I mean, he's he's still part of it. Like he's still the teleporting thing is still part of his thing. But I don't know if you noticed that um, Ozymandias did he was he was very very he was he was richer than anybody right he was one of the richest men in, i think he pretty much the richest man in the world one of the reasons is, is because he did a lot of genetic development so like you know his cat bombastus like he made that cat mm -hmm. like that was a genetic creation that yeah. he made he also you don't see it in the movie but you hear it i was watching a thing on the movie just earlier and they were talking about the four-legged turkey and they don't or four-legged yeah. chicken they don't mention it they don't show it in the movie it's shown in the comic book but in the movie you can hear it in the background somebody says i'm really glad i ordered the four-legged chicken and yeah. um so apparently he had done a lot of genetic modification of things in, in you know in that world um so he genetically modifies this giant alien like creature and instead of like dropping bombs on the cities, he drops this big giant squid like alien thing on all the cities so that mankind thinks they're being attacked from an alien Outer being. Yeah. And that's what causes them to band together against this alien being, not against Dr. Manhattan. And I think that works a little bit better because it plays into the whole concept of how humans in group and out group, you know, so. Our in-group are Americans mm -hmm. and our out-group are the Russians. So we fight with the Russians and we're their out-group. So they fight with us. So it's tribalism, right? But when an outside mm -hmm. tribe, so like an alien race, is attacking us, our tribes come together because ultimately Earth becomes the tribe yeah. and that becomes the outer tribe. Whereas Dr. Manhattan isn't really like a tribe. I mean, he, it, it fills a role and it's okay. It's a fair ending. It's all right. It's just not as good as what the alien ending would have been. But I understand why they did it because from a from a cinematic standpoint, it would have looked cheesy. Like I think it was cinematically a better way to tell the story, but in a comic book, the alien works. But the, from a story point of view, the alien works. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Uh, I, I got to be honest. I think um, if – I try to put it in perspective of if I was reading the story as a novel, what would work best for me? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and for me, I think that's too far of an outside angle to do, to do the genetic approach. Okay. Because, because just the coordination of just that alone of dropping the squids on the different cities, I'm looking at logistics. I'm looking at how, how would they do it and what, what kind of campy science would they have to come up with in order to do that? Right. Okay. Whereas power source, based on Dr. Manhattan's powers himself, mm -hmm. that's that's a that's a natural extension of the growth of technology and the growth of the society. So for me, it actually works better okay. to have Dr. Manhattan basically be the source of the catastrophe. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I see that from a logistical standpoint, it makes more sense. Yeah. I was thinking of it from a sociological, you know what I mean? But you're, but you're right, because yeah. like you'd have to, because the aliens were these huge things. I mean, they were like, they were like as big as skyscrapers or yeah. something. I don't know. It, was, it would have been kind of cheesy. I mean, but when you think about his character anyway, he is kind of alien per se to the human race. I mean, he doesn't really fit with humans anyway. Yep. Because he's still smart. He's sure. very different. Um, I mean, mm. as far as the movie goes, though, I really liked. The special effects I thought were okay were really good. I really yeah, like were. Rorschach's mask. I thought I was like, oh my god, how the heck do they do that? Yeah, That's that so was cool. cool. That was really neat. Um, I did actually like the soundtrack. Um, oh, yeah. you know, Mike wasn't a huge fan, but I thought it was actually pretty good. It felt fresh, I guess. Oh, there were. Let me let me back up. There were, I would say, two or three songs out of the entire soundtrack that I disliked, um, but for the most part, I I liked the soundtrack. I still would give it a. A four out of five, which yeah. I, I, what would you give the entire movie? Uh, I, well, actually, what are you guys have your own movie scale? Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, that? and then and then I want to I want to save time because I I have a slew of um yeah. of uh, quotes that I want to share just so we can kind of. Okay. Well, I can I can do the I can do the quick rundown again of the three categories. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, we typically uh, and, and actually we've expanded to four categories, right, Tori? Oh, the, with the fun factor. Sure. The top. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's right. Um, so basically, it's it's characters. How how do the characters and the actors portray the characters? 
interact in the movie and how 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 well did that come across? Uh, the other is life uh, scale or uh, so yeah, five five. scale. Okay. So the scale is three is completely average. It falls within the average range of everything you've seen. Five is the top five percent of everything you've seen. Four is it's above average but not best. And then obviously the opposite side, one is it's within the top 5% of the worst crap you've seen. And then two is slightly below average. Okay. And if you say five, you better have a really good reason. Yeah, you, you better I'm have a really, reason for it to be five. Yeah, I'm a tough critic. I usually stay in the three, four range. I pretty much hate everything. So. <laughs> but there's characters. So characters involve <clears throat> how were the characters portrayed and how were the actors in portraying the characters. Okay. Uh, the second one is the story itself. How well was the story portrayed in the medium? And then the third one is special effects. How did the costumes, the, the things they were wearing, the things they were touching, the backgrounds, how did all that feel and come across? And then we've recently added fun factor. So how fun was it for you? Did it actually entertain you or were you bored despite the fact that everything else was spectacular? Okay. I think we should call uh, Peter out first. Because right, he tried on. to call me out first earlier. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You guys have them because we're, we're compiling our scores. I'm doing it. I got no. it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So, Tori, I'm going to defend this. I gave the characters 4.5. I can do point fives, right? Nope. Nope. Oh, God nope. damn it. You've got to commit. All right. I'm going to lean on for character. Number. For character, I'm going to lean on five. And, I, and, it, and it has to do with everything about this movie that I love about it. All the stuff I really love about this movie is characters. It's so heavily character-driven. You know, mm -hmm. it's at, at the sacrifice of story at some point. The characters are, are hardcore, right? Okay. Yep, that's fair. Story. So my, oh, oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Oh, we go around. Okay, we'll go around characters. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Oh, so you're saying I can't go points. No points. All right. Uh, then I'm going to... Do I do a three or a four for characters? Because... I feel like there could have been better choices for the actors, but I think that the actors did a great job, like a better than average job, depicting the characters. Um, I just, uh, just do it. I'll go with four. I'll go with four. Okay. I'm, four. I'm also going to go with a four. Um, I actually really enjoyed the characters, like the characters themselves, and I like the people that played them. Yeah. Um, it wasn't an overuse of people that we've seen a lot. And I actually appreciated that because I hate mm -hmm. seeing the same people in the same movies mm -hmm. in the same roles all the time. So I like that. Yep. And I'd have to say four as well. It, it was almost a five, uh, but because of the poor use of Silk Spectre 2 and frankly, the deadpan performance of the owl, Daniel, I think, yeah. I think, I think he could have been a little bit more expression. See, but you got to see his butt. What's that? His real butt. He's got a nice butt, butt too. I, did. I, I, I definitely appreciated the butt. But small in his back. Hey, that's why I was four point five, Scott, for both those reasons. That was my. <laughs> that was the point five that it lost, but I had to commit, so I went five. Because uh, <laughs> it wasn't enough to knock it down to a four, in my opinion. Nice. All right. So, Peter, let's go with um, uh, special effects and scenery. All right, special effects. I give that a four. Uh, and that it's more about the really awesome co the costumes I think are mm -hmm. second to none. Those costumes were fantastic. Um, yeah. and I like the way they use the costumes. Like, you know, they, it's, they bought into the characters. Like the, the, the costumes were yeah. perfectly set for them. Like when the owl jumps out of the thing and his, and his fucking cape is out like a, you know like yeah. like wings i was like oh yeah. it was so well done and yeah. uh and, and rorschach's really? what that falls on story what no i'm sorry he said effects are you not paying attention i'm sorry did we yeah. miss story? we jumped yeah. it pay attention i'm sorry <laughs> all right um it <laughs> it would have been a five for some of the other effects though like i, th I think you know um they were good. They were really good. But like you said, five is like super fantastic, awesome -tastic. Um So yeah, I'm gonna go four. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. So special effects, Mike. What do you think? Uh, honestly, and I'm judging this by 2009 standards. Uh, that I had to give it a five. 
and That's and cool. I'm, and I will defend it by saying that the things that they did, like uh, for example, Doctor Manhattan, the the guy who um, when they did this the mocap for him or whatever, he actually had blue um, light like uh, LED lights on his body in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. And it it that's how they captured the blue um, the blue tint on everyone else's face and, and where he walked. So yeah. um, it was things like that, as well as even um, again, 2009 CGI all around for the movie was really well. The um, like like Pete was saying, even the costumes um, since they were made, and I'm I'm judging this on the fact that they were made to be campy. They were supposed to be campy a little bit, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they nailed it. Yeah, so, no, they did, they yeah. did. Yeah, the, the, Mike, the, the only thing I was saying was, like, for example, the scenes on Mars weren't as good as they could have been. Like, I've seen other movies from the same time period where the Mars, all the Mars stuff was, like, it was just better. The That crystal thing that he was in was, mm-hmm. that could have been done better, even at that time. Um, but it was good. I, I'm not knocking it. I, I mean, I'm going by Tori's scale here. Five has got to be super fantastic. So I said four. <laughs> good job, Pete. <laughs> No, but I mean, with in Mike's defense, when you do look at the time period, it does change the scale. But for me, I'm still going to go with a four. Um, there were a couple of things that, like you said, the parts on Mars, I was like, okay, that could be more believable. Um, I really hated it when they put the stupid <laughs> smiley face on Mars. <laughs> that so was for a, that alone, they're getting touch. a four. Yeah. <laughs> They could have had a five just on Warshak's mask. But no, they had to put the stupid oh smiley face. Pay attention, Mike, needs to be a t-shirt. I'm on it. <laughs> we got you covered. All right, so for, so for me, for special effects and costumes, I, I'm between a four and a five, but I got to give it a five. Even though I hated uh, Ozymandias' base at the end, I thought it was cheesiest thing ever with all the Egyptian statues and all the Egyptian stuff. I'm like, eh, it sucks. But what really gave it a five for me was the opening credits. Going back to 1940s, 1950s, 1960s with all the scenes and all the photography and all that. That I thought was, even by today's standard, above and beyond what what most would be doing in any movie. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was good. I thought some of the costumes too and the older photos and the older part, I thought was they were like, oh, those are so cute. Like old Halloween type costumes, you know? Yeah. yeah. But that was on purpose. And obviously that yeah. they did a really good job of that. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. The Minutemen right, costumes. All right. Story. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go four on that as well. I think there, like, like we've said, there were some, there were some weak points in it. I thought there was little parts that were kind of flat. I mean, he was very, he stuck very tightly to Alan Moore's story, which was revolutionary in 1985. It did because that's when the comic came out, you know, and it, it really it changed. I mean, there was no comic like that. Like we take for granted. We take that for granted in comics now, but it didn't exist in com- like those stories didn't exist back then. Like, you know, so when you look back on it, like, oh, well, it's not that revolutionary. I mean, I see stuff like this all the time. It's like, yeah, now you do because of this. There are comics before Watchmen and comics after Watchmen. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but he did, he, you know, he stuck to the story pretty good. But still, I'm going to give it a four. I mean, that to me, that's, he, he nailed, he nailed it very well. Uh, I think it still told a good story. I've watched the movie like four or five times and I never get bored of it. No. All right. In the interest of time, because we're really late on time, I'm saying four. Okay. Four. Uh, four. Okay. Oh. And then, and then, fun factor. Oh, oh. I'm, this is look, I, I, I'm. So fun. Fa- it's not a movie that's a lot of fun, right? As in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. hold, hold on. Because it's, it's enjoyable to watch. That's I, that's I part of the fun factor. Enjoyable to that. watch. All right, yeah. uh, because I don't want to be so disparaging, then I will take my three up to a four. Um, no, no, let's watch no, it. No, it's give, okay, a three, it's give a three and justify it. Yeah, I, I, I don't it's know. All good, dude. Okay, to me, fun, and, and maybe you need to redefine what fun is for, for me. But to me, fun is like, oh, it's just, it's good. It's it's uh, you know, like uh, uh. 
you know, car porn or the, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, um, what do you call it? The Fast the, and the Furious? Furious or, or you know, Flash Gordon or fun. Flash Gordon. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's like a fun, a, a movie that like it's spoon feeding me. I don't have to really work it. I, I don't think fun is like I have to really work and, and work my brain out. For but some maybe people, that's, that's fun. That's fun for me. I love those yeah. kind of movies. Yeah, and if, and if it's not fun for you, then it's then it's a two or a three. It's okay, right? No, no, I'm I'm giving it a you know I want to give it a three point five. Give it a three, then, brother. Give it a three. Give it a three. Go on, Mike. Don't hurt yourself. It's a three. It's fine. It's a three. It's fine. You're good. Haters, haters gonna hate on my three. All right, quick, let's wrap it up. All right, all right. So can Close I uh, really want to uh, really quickly? I'll go down my list and uh, give you some of my favorite quotes. Okay. Before you get the quotes, I want there was there was three points I picked out. Uh, there was a couple points I want to. Just bring out real quick. Uh, oh, uh, do it. The, the original Night Owl, right, saves the Waynes, so Batman never happens. The fight scene in the beginning where he's fighting the crook, where the original Owl's fighting the crook, that's the theater. And if you look in the background, uh, Bruce and Martha Wayne, or not Bruce, um, uh, oh, what's his father's name? Damn it. Anyway, oh. his parents are coming out of the theater. You see him in the background. He basically saves them from getting killed so batman never happens uh there are 51 stars in the flag if you look yep. at it because yep. vietnam becomes a state yeah oh right. yep. and if you notice at the very end when they go into the they go to where you see rorschach's manual that he dropped off there's mm -hmm. a car out front at an electric charging station this yeah. is like 1985 so ozymandias has managed to incorporate <laughs> um uh, Dr. Manhattan's energy source, and the world now has that energy. Was that the red car that had like the yep. weird tire flap thing? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. The, um, the um, smart car. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. looks like like Honda or something. Yep. That was that's my points. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. All right. So here are some quotes. Uh, we can gamify this slightly. You can yell out who said it. Uh, a live human body and a deceased human body have the same number of particles. Structurally, there's no difference. Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan. There. Come on. You see, at the time I was misquoted. I never said the that Superman exists and he's an American. What I said was God exists and he's an American. Now I almost feel like I want to read this as um as, as uh what's his name? Viglaven. Yeah. Never said. That was, that was, uh, that. That's his Wally. friend. Wow. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, hold on. If you begin to feel that intense, crushing feeling of the uh, religious error and all of the concepts, don't be alarmed. That just indicates that you are still sane. <laughs> wow. I will never nope. get that time back in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was milking glass. All right. <clears throat> I'm not a comic book villain. Do you seriously think I would explain my master stroke to you if there were even <laughs> Slightest possibility you could affect the outcome. I triggered it 35 minutes ago. Yeah, that was the best, dude. That is the best part of that movie when he does that. I saw that. I was like, oh fuck yeah, that's awesome. I kind of became an Osmodeus fan yeah, right. just for that. Just for that alone. Wow. <laughs> Your finger is licking is like licking a battery. Yeah, oh, that's right, Lori. Fine. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm 67 years old. Every day the future looks a little bit darker but the past even the grimy parts of it seem keep on getting brighter well, that's silk specter one yeah yep. i was gonna say that yep. that was sally jupiter yep. mama specter mama specter that's right <laughs> okay now these are all uh roy Shack quotes okay <clears throat> here comes his boy <laughs> Never compromise, not even in the face of Armageddon. That's always been the difference between us, Daniel. <laughs> An attack on one of us is attack on all of us. This one I'm saving till the show ender. All right. <clears throat> None of you seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. <laughs> yeah, that was a great that was line. Fun. That was a great one. This, this one is probably one of my favorites of him. You see, Doctor... God didn't kill that little girl. Fate didn't butcher her. And destiny didn't feed her to those dogs. If God saw what any of us did that night, he didn't seem to mind. From then on, I knew God doesn't make the world this way. We do. Mm, very true. Very, very true. All right. Two more. Two more. <clears throat> <laughs> is, this, is this what you have now, a normal life? When you walk down the street of a city dying of rabies, past the human cockroaches talking about their heroin and child pornography, 
do you really feel normal? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, uh, and when the drains finally scab over <laughs> and all the vermin will drown, the accumulated filth of all their sex and murder will foam up around their waist and all the whores and politicians will look up and shout, save us. And I will whisper, no. Right. <laughs> Those are powerful. But my favorite Rorschach quote is, Hi, Dan. Oh, God. <laughs> I had some beans. Yeah, yeah. I had some beans. <laughs> Do you want me to heat those up for you? Nah, find where they are. <laughs> He's brooding about beans, man. <laughs> Fuck boy. My boy. All right, let's wrap this baby up. All right. All right. Well, guys, thanks. Oh, hey. Scatori has a tell us about your podcast. We have a podcast. I, I've heard I've heard rumor. <laughs> well, you can find us on Facebook, uh, Scatori S C O T O R I. You can follow us on Instagram as well under the same, uh, and you can follow us at Scatori dot com. Right, and, and you can meet us, us on, on iTunes. Oh yeah, iTunes. Are you guys still putting stuff out regularly? Uh, but if by regularly mean a couple times a year, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, what is your, what? As regular as an eighty-year-old man. <laughs> pretty much. Well, no, it we, happens. We, a bit we've got a, we've, we've got, got a pretty. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say we have a lot of content ready to go. We just haven't done it. We've got a little bit of editing to do. We've this year we've kind of bitten off a lot. Yeah. Um, and so we're trying to get all of the pieces put together and finish some projects. Yeah, you all have been pretty ambitious, like a yeah. chihuahua with ADHD, right? <laughs> well, with, it, it's crazy, too, because, like, last year with Scott's cancer journey, Yeah. now we're playing catch-up from last year. So we're, we're getting there. We'll get there. Okay, fantastic. But yeah. stand by, expect more. Okay. Oh, and we got a we – got, there's a book that we're going to be talking about at some point, right? Is it yeah, we're, we're in the final stretches this week. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it's called, uh, but we keep getting go... second. We keep getting second emails from people who say, "Oh, look, I forgot that I put the same word in there twice." Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> might have done that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, Pete. <laughs> Maybe it was Mike. Maybe yeah. it was Mike. If only you had a. If only a writer would have written that, you know, know, so that it that wouldn't have happened. You know, you could have avoided that whole thing. <laughs> I'm just like a chihuahua on ADHD. Right. Pay attention. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, let's wrap this up. Here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread the Mythfit, the Mythwits. The Mythwits, we are Misfits. The Mythwits love over the entire planet. This would be a good one. This was a fun one. Um, tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is TSR podcast production. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool sh shows. Shows, more cool shows. More cool shows like <laughs> Dead Game Society, the show where the host talks with designers about our favorite games that are no longer in print. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't change it, and don't judge a man's junk on Mars. It's so cold on Mars. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Tell your friends to listen. And next week, Mike? Men get arrested. Dogs get put down. Word.